I think it's safe to say that you've you've joined the the Rad Musical Club with uh, Trent Reznor and Underworld. Like the sonic journey of this series is so incredible, and I would love some insight into your process because I know this this isn't your your first go in scoring a series or film, but what is it like to channel your creativity through the minds of characters who are just consumed by darkness? How does it compare to your your personal projects that are that are not made for the visual medium? Um, it's a different process, but in many ways, it's quite similar. We're we're quite conscious to um, to work with projects that we think we can reflect tonally. With Blackbirds, um, the first thing I did was I, uh, I read the book that it's based on, so I kind of kind of got a, a grip of the story, and then spoke to Dennis. Really got uh, a picture of what they were trying to do, what what he was trying to say with the story, and really from then on, it was just a, a process of writing music that we thought married their vision as well mm -hmm. as something that we were that we were really really happy with too and um yeah it can be a a, a bumpy ride sometimes but this one was uh was pretty smooth yeah, yeah. It, it, we're really happy with how it turned out so would you say that your your writing process here was mostly fueled by the tone in the story of the series or did you have particular scenes in mind for you to place your music into a bit of both really um we'll we'll come up with themes that that we think work for the whole project and then when it, we get into the kind of nitty-gritty with the music supervisors they'll be like oh we, we really like that we want that here for a minute here for 20 seconds you know you get into the kind of technical mm. side of things but generally as, as far as composition goes we're really kind of just doing something that we think in the early stages works with the project as a whole what was it like watching it back and and seeing all the areas where they plugged your music into does it does it change your relationship with the music that you created after seeing the images that accompany it yeah, I mean, it, it, it's just really great being involved in the whole process and kind of seeing, a, watching a scene and having to come up with something that um, accentuates that drama or kind of adds to the adds to the the story that's being told. I think it's um, we're always quite conscious that the, the music shouldn't uh, the music shouldn't uh, ever be overbearing it should always be um it should always be something that augments rather than takes the place of the of the of the picture and the story mm -hmm. reason i ask is because i've been listening to your music for many many years and i remember listening to a place for parks off your first album tin rapid when I was in high school, I saw the the visuals to that song in my head because it uses voices that come in and out. And I just always associated that with standing in my school's hallways as students would pass me by and go to and from classes. And your, your title track for Blackbird operates very similarly in that it's very layered, but it also uses voices of uh, children here for reasons that are appropriate to the story so I'm just genuinely curious with how visual you may get with your music whether you're creating for the band or for entertainment projects such as this yeah it's I mean it goes from one extreme to the other like when you when you talk about like the like the really early Mogwai songs we were we were just trying to put one foot in front of the other at that point and really it, it actually took quite a long time before anyone even suggested the visual element to us whereas we're now we're in a position like with blackbird like the theme song 
where we literally had the titles and we we're like we need to we need to come up with some music that makes this work that kind of makes you interested in this story and and that makes you um intrigued by the images you know like and, and kind of come up with something kind of spooky and weird and all these kind of things that would never cross our minds even though quite a lot of our music kind of ended up being spooky and weird just by just because of the music we like and the kind of people we are i guess so i i think i think it's something that we've had to learn to do but we had a head start because in many ways we were doing that anyway um we just didn't realize it at the time was there anything that was particularly informative about creating music for the visual medium after you saw the mogwai track helicon one used in the the 2018 film beautiful boy does something like that shift your approach at all to something like this um yeah i think i think over the years we have learned from ways that our music music has been used i mean i remember when we had when michael mann used their music in miami vice it really kind of changed how i thought about those songs just seeing them work in a context that was just a surprise. I wouldn't say a different context because there was no context when we made them other than writing some new songs. So, and and something like Beautiful Boy was so, so emotional and that's an emotional song as well. So I was just really, especially a song like that, because that, that was one that was written while we still rehearsed in our bedrooms, you know, at our parents' mm -hmm. house. So like seeing it be part of this really, really great movie with a, with, with really great people involved was yeah, yeah really emotional on on quite a few levels is it easier for you to come up with complex layered songs like the blackbird title track or is it something that's more stripped down and simple like the track jessica to be honest they're they're kind of the same it's just a it's just it's just a, a different way of getting to the end goal. You can do you can do it by kind of overwhelming people with with sound and noise and kind of uh, with melodies that bounce off each other, or you can do it with sheer minimalism. But at, at, at the end of the day, it's 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 the end result that matters, and I think the where we're going to it we're trying to get to the same place even if it's a different way of, of getting there mm. did you have any say with what music outside your creation would be used in this series like the the low fidelity all-stars track that was used at the end of episode four or was that strictly dennis and the showrunners no no that was the that was the people making the show's call sure. and I, I i like the fact that it was all very um sympathetic to the era which i think is a great is a great way of um anchoring something in the time that it's set you know sure so yeah yeah i, I thought they did a good job when do uh when do songs typically hit you is it is it mostly while you're jamming or does it ever happen when you're out in the world and you have to exit whatever you're doing to go deal with it right then and there? Yeah, I'd say 90% of the time it's when I'm playing an instrument. Sometimes I'll have an idea and yeah, I'll, I'll make a note or a voice note or something, but usually it's when playing, I'm just finding a few chords that work well next to each other or just a melody or or, or, or a rhythm or something. So that's one thing that, that scoring has kind of taught us is how how quickly we can come up with something because you have to, you know, you're kind of like, there's no time to, to wait on your muse. You're, someone needs something pretty quickly. So it's, it's definitely yeah. ta taught, us, taught us a different way of working that, that we didn't or had never tried to before. We're just about out of time, so I'll I'll send you off by asking, what do you what do you creatively plug into these days? Do you still find inspiration in what you were listening to when you formed Mogwai, or are you finding more inspiration from music today and stories today? 
I mean, I, I think finding new music has gotten so much easier, you know, in the in the digital age. It used to be you had to go and find a record store or a radio station, and now you can literally hear any, anything being made by anyone all over the world. So, yeah, I think I think our kind of influences have really, really grown arms and legs. I still still listen to a bunch of stuff that that we were obsessed with when we were teenagers. But yeah, find out. It's great to be able to hear music from all over the world. Um, we played in in, the, in Japan a month ago, and I went and got a bunch of um, amazing Japanese ambient music that that I just absolutely adore. Um, and yeah, that would have been a, a, well, you would have had to go to Japan for a start, but you could hear that anyone could hear that music now. So I, I think it's great the way that the world has opened up to everyone musically.